Good evening. And welcome to the community of Holy Cross and Our Mother of Sorrows churches. For all who are welcome, for who are, yeah, excuse me, for all who are here, and also those of you who are watching, we are two parishes working collaboratively to build a bridge to Christ, and we are pleased to have you joining our Eucharistic celebration. There are two collections this weekend: our regular collection and our regular weekend collection, and the Catholic Home Mission Appeal envelope. As always, we thank you for your continued support. A few announcements. Tomorrow, please join the Holy Cross Catholic Faith Enrichment Video Group as they view from Fatima Gems, Praying for the Salvation of Souls, tomorrow at 9 a.m. in the Parish Center. And also on next Sunday on May 1st, the Holy Cross Catholic Faith Enrichment Video Group will be viewing Fatima Gems' Saturday Devotion. All are welcome, 9 o'clock after uh, the 8 a.m. Mass. And please join at Our Mother of Sorrows tomorrow for our Divine Mercy celebration, which is at 2.30 p.m. Next Sunday, May 1st, we will have the procession to the grotto for the May crowning. We are in need of many participants, and please see the bulletin. And our Shore Winds and Ladder Road West and East volunteers are collecting items for the residents at these facilities. Please see the bulletin for details, and your generous donations are greatly appreciated. As we prepare ourselves, let us turn our attention to the altar where the holy sacrifice of the Mass will be celebrated by Father Kafis, assisted by Deacon Joe Palacios on this Divine Mercy Su Sunday. We invite you to take a hymnal, red or green, it doesn't matter, for our opening hymn. It's number 442 in the green hymnal, number 526 in the red hymnal. Sing with all the saints in glory. Please stand and join in song. Pasqua. In Italian, in Greek, Christos Aneste. Happy Easter, everyone. We continue to celebrate this glorious season of Easter. It's so wonderful to be here on this, the second Sunday of Easter, to celebrate the Lord's resurrection. He has risen. Alleluia, alleluia. And the church says, Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Before we begin the Mass, I would like to invite you to be seated for a very important announcement from our friend Doug Escher. Doug is leading a very important effort with our Rosary Crusade, and so, Doug, please tell us more about this. 
Well, there I was, as every morning, coming from upstairs, downstairs. I stop at the bottom step, and I say, Lord, I'm healthy, I'm moving, I'm vibrant. How can I serve, and what can I do today? Then my left foot hits the ground, and I hear a noise. My right foot followed, I turn, and I notice a book had fallen to the floor. The book was called The Power of the Rosary. I says, okay. I looked at it and I said, but what's unique about this morning, it was November 1st, All Saints Day. And I gotta tell you, that book had been on the corner for a year or better. It hadn't moved. But when my left foot went down, and I'm not jumping down, I just got down. It fell. So I said, Lord, I said, I guess you want me to read this book. And so I said, I, I had it. It was actually published in the 1990s, and I read it before and forgotten it, of course. And so I went through it. And I came upon one area. It was in the 15th century. The Muslims were going to attack the European Christians to defeat them. They were heavily outnumbered, three to one. And Pope Pius V at the time declared what's called a Rosary Crusade. Bottom line, the battle happened. The Christians won. And it was said it wasn't the human hands that won that war, it was the praying hands. And there's other stories in the book that really reinforce that power of the rosary. So I said, I guess, Lord, you're saying we got to look at having a rosary crusade. So I brought it to our stewardship and evangelization committee on Saturday morning. I said, folks, here's what happened. And I gave them each a book. Please go read it. And if you can, we'll get back next week and let me know if this is something you think we should pursue. And they all came back and said, yeah. We've got to do this. We've got to present it, put a plan together, and present it to our pastor, Father Bill, which we did. And not surprisingly, Father Bill enthusiastically accepted it and said, what better time for a rosary crusade than now? Because look at all that's going on. I don't have to tell you. Normally in this parish, before COVID, there would be six to 800 people attending Mass. Now we're working about 400. There's a lot of people that we'd like to come back. Vocations are down. We'd like to get more vocations. And of course, we all know the state of the economy. We all know what's going on in Europe. There couldn't be a better time. So you're gonna ask yourself, how do I get involved in Rosary Crusade? Well, we have a membership card. And, on this, and they're in the pews. For, this is for those who are already engaged in praying the Rosary. We simply just like you to be able to sign up and at both the north side of the door and back to Paris Center, just leave them on the table. Then there's many of us that aren't familiar with the rosary. So we've got everything you want to know on how to pray the rosary, including the 15 promises of Mary to Christians who recite the rosary. And, and there's even a rosary in there. So everything a person would need to want to become a member of the Rosary Crusade is here. No charge, free. And again, when we look for pledges, which you could pledge one Hail Mary a week, a decade a week, or whatever you feel in your heart is right for you, maybe you won't check up. This is something we do as individuals, but collectively we can make an even bigger difference. But we have to do it individually. And these are at, again, the North Door and the Parish Center. You can take them. If you want to sign and register now, go ahead. We'd love to have you do that. Or bring it back and put it in a collection plate next week. So how would I know this is, we know this is working? Let me share one story with my neighbors, uh, Charlie and Mary Jo Kelly. I explained to them we're going to be running uh, this crusade, and they each got a book. And they've got a home in Florida, there's one here. So Charlie was on the way back a few weeks ago from Florida on a Monday morning. And he took out the book and started to read it. All of a sudden, he felt a hand on his shoulder. And he looked, he turned, there was a lady who was in tears. She says, it looks like you're praying. Would you pray with me for I have a son who's severely depressed? 
and needs prayer. But if you know Charlie, that's the right guy to be. And he got up, very much supported her, and she walked away with the book. But that probably wouldn't have happened if he wasn't engaged in learning more about the rosary. And I'd love to hear all the stories that could happen as a result of a parish between Holy Cross and Mother of Sorrows, the stories that could be generated, and see the difference we all can make doing it one time, one person at a time. So what I ask you to do, like I did that morning, just take one step, and you're going to find you're going to be one step closer to making your life and our lives better with the rosary. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people 
you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, and by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the Apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women, were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. The second reading is a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see. 
Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, lampstands, one like the Son of a man, of man, wearing an ankle length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. On the, er on the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus again said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you have forgiven, whose, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, the disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your, put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, but have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord.
Why was Thomas there when Jesus appeared to the disciples the second time? We usually focus on the point that Thomas was not there when the Lord first appeared. But knowing that the Lord came, and that Thomas was not there the first time, could have been a reason for Thomas to step away from it all and not be with the disciples again. Thomas could have asked if the Lord appeared when I was not there I guess he doesn't want me. Well we don't really know for certain why he was there a week later. I believe that we can say this. The way the believing community accompanied Thomas, persuaded him in the way of faith, the way the disciples interacted with Thomas throughout that week, must have been compassionate. And it must have been encouraging to Thomas. Not so much, Thomas, too bad you weren't there. Guess who came? <clears throat> None of that. But rather, disciple after disciple after disciple Witness after witness after witness must have compassionately said to Thomas, We saw the Lord, Thomas. He was right here. And this is what it was like. I've got to share this with you. They were not harsh, but rather filled with faith. And they shared their faith, their encounter with the risen Christ, with Thomas. For sure, the disciples prayed for Thomas throughout that week. No doubt, they encouraged him in faith. They prayed with Thomas, and they prayed with for Thomas. And I think this is a really good reminder for us on how we are called to share the faith with others. We all know people. We are related to people. We love people who for whatever reason do not come to church. That's true. <laughs> and it's sad. That is also true. But I believe the way in which we accompany, the way in which we encourage, the way in which we invite, because invitation is evangelization, models the way in which the believing community, those disciples who were in the room on that first Easter, encouraged Thomas so that he no longer was filled with doubt 
but rather filled with faith. And it starts, my brothers and sisters, and continues through prayer. That is why I'm so grateful to our friend Doug Escher for presenting today this Rosary Crusade because the church most certainly needs continual prayer. There are so many things within our local experience of church, within our own community, within the world, that we as disciples of Christ are called to bring to the loving, attentive care of our Mother Mary, our Queen of Peace. And so I encourage you on this Divine Mercy Sunday to consider how the act of praying for a situation, a person that we are concerned about, helps us to realize that it's not all on our shoulders, but God is asking us, through prayer, to realize His plan and His guidance. This Rosary Crusade, which begins in our community of Mother of Sorrows and Holy Cross, no doubt will help all the members of our community to realize that we are not isolated like Thomas was on that first Easter Sunday, but that we are called to grow in and to share the faith and to embrace the gift of faith that God gives us. And for us, here at the Parish of Holy Cross, the Rosary has a special meaning. I remember praying shortly after I began my ministry as pastor here with a group of people on a Saturday morning. We prayed the Rosary. And I was seated or kneeling right by the presider's chair. And we were praying the joyful mysteries. And I looked up at this magnificent window, and there it was, the Annunciation. Wow, that's a coincidence. It's beautiful. It's right there. I don't need a book or anything. It was right there. And then the next decade of the joyful mysteries came, and that is the Annunciation, or after the Annunciation, is the Visitation. And then after the Visitation, the next joyful mystery was the Nativity, followed by the Presentation in the Temple, find, followed by the Finding in the Temple. For us, we have a special connection with the mysteries of the Rosary. And the mysteries of the rosary remind us that as we go through times of mystery, times in which we're not quite sure what exactly is going to happen, Mary's intercession, Mary's presence, Mary's motherly love and care always guides us. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I invite you to stand now as together we profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We now bring before our loving God our various needs. For the church experiencing the distress and the endurance we have in Jesus, that we may also share in his victory as the risen and glorified Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That there may be joyful shouts of victory in the tents of the just, as the resurrection of Jesus empowers them to conquer the obstacles thrown up by evil in the world today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this Mercy Sunday we may experience the peace that Jesus offered to his apostles with forgiveness of all their sins, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That men and women may generously open their hearts to God's invitation to serve his people, through the priesthood, the diaconate, and the religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those enrolled in our book of prayers, for the sick and the distressed in mind and spirit, that the healing that flowed out from the apostles in Jesus' name may rejoice and strengthen them today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed ones, that Jesus, who holds the keys of death and the netherworld, and who lives forever and ever, may raise them up to be with him in his glorious kingdom, especially Harriet Leister, Frederick Dan Schlitzer, Chester Polinski, Mary Weatherhag, and Douglas Brooks, and for Jim Baylor, and Elizabeth Libby Coughlin, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. We pray to the Lord. And for a lasting peace throughout the troubled regions of the world, especially in Ukraine, the Middle East, for an end to all war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Loving and gracious God, we know that you hear all the prayers that we, your church, bring before you. We ask that you continue to guide us with your spirit. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
share God's divinity or humble himself to share in our humanity. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the Lord and God's name, for our good and all God's holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. mystery of faith as we celebrate the memorial of of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and Matthew, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Mother of Sorrows, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Faustina and St. John Paul II, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Now in a safe way, let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be under my roof, but I will say the word, and I so shall be
act of spiritual communion. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This weekend we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, and so tomorrow at uh, Mother Sorrows we will have a beautiful prayer service for Divine Mercy. Uh, Father Marthasello will lead us in the chaplet and will offer uh, special prayers for the Divine Mercy, and uh, confessions will also be available. So we invite you to come and uh, participate in this beautiful prayer service reminding us of the gift of God's mercy. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Let us go out to love and serve the Lord by serving one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our closing hymn is number 590 in the Green Gather Hymnal, We Walk by Faith.